the full study, where the Bible and myself do not want you to be a fool. And I hope that this study will enlighten all of us. Because as we saw with the introduction in last week, the first two foolish things that we've seen, there are events in our Christian life that we will play the fool. We are foolish. And we need to repent. We need to get right. For our third fool, Deuteronomy 32, verse 6. We are still sinners after salvation. That's simple. If we confess our sins, we, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I dealt with a guy one time and his claim was he never sinned and never will sin and that the fact is by me admitting that I was a sinner I could never and will never be saved. And the aspect of my study in the Bible is that we learn all the sins that we do that we don't know that we're doing that we will be held accountable. My intent was to, to this foolish study was I don't want us to be fools. I never, never realized that studying the fool in the Bible. Now maybe it's just me, but I find myself to be a fool. And with that condemnation, that's another thing I need to repent of, to be right with God. And when you hear these studies, and you are that part, you are without excuse. As much as I preach to people on the street about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can never tell God you never knew. And then when wood, hay, or stubble shows up for your foolishness, and you've heard, you can never say, I never knew. Now, Deuteronomy 32, verse 6, Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he that thy father that has brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Now, this is the song of Moses, the victory in God, the love of God, that he has gotten Israel out of Egypt, he has protected them from the army of the Egyptians. Fools and double fools. Fools indeed. Do you requite the Lord, O oh, foolish people, and unwise? Unwise is foolish, and foolish is unwise. To insult or offer or trouble one, on whom ye so entirely depend. Requite is to repay or pay. So do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people? Do you repay the Lord? Do you pay back the Lord? God led them out of Egypt, and the people have corrupted themselves. 32.5 They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Is that how you paid your Lord? Is that how you do God as a born-again Christian? You sin in the same equal or more latitude? You are just as worse and getting worser, if that's a word? Have you corrupted yourself in your Christian walk? Is that how you pay back the Lord? They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of their children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is he not your father? Is he not cared for you? Has Christ not died and suffered on that cross? And I see Christians, and there are Christians out there who, who are saved and just go about their business as, you know what, I'm saved, who cares? It's going to be wood, hay, or stubble. To forsake your own mercies, 
Forsake your own mercies for lying vanities. Bought thee. That has redeemed thee from the Egyptian bondage. Made thee. Not only in the general by creation, but by a particular manner by which thee are his particular people. We're looking at Israel right now. All that God has done to bring them out of Egypt. And they reward him with vanity and vileness. That's a fool. That's someone who will not even try to do. That's someone who will not try to be right. Deuteronomy 32, 21. Same chapter. Not far from the last foolish. They have moved me to jealousy, God speaking, with that which is not God, capital G. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. There's that word again. That's going to show up a lot. Vanities. Vanities empty. Nothing. You have nothing to give to God. But God has given all to you. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Gentiles. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. There's a foolish nation. America is a foolish nation today. She may even have once have a roots or a standing as a Christian nation. She may have a source in God and maybe the Word of God, but them roots today are gone. She is a ways of any other God making God jealous, just as the nation of Israel has. Any nation. Under the sun. That has forsaken the God of the Bible. For other gods. Not Jehovah. Is a foolish nation. Nations. So people as a group can be fools. Not just individuals. You can have an entire nation. That has been fooled by Satan. And making God jealous. And here the subject are the Gentiles. A people without God. With small G-O-D-S. Today it would be the nation that receives Jesus Christ as their, as their Savior. The Jewish Messiah. The Jews rejected God. All points, all form. Old Testament, Gospels, and the New Testament. And God says, for their reward, for their, their foolishness, for their iniquity, making him jealous. He said, I'm going to call those dogs. I'm going to lift up those dogs that you don't like, that I have separated you from. You're not to have a diet like them. You're to be circumcised unlike them. You're not to marry them. You're to get them out of your land. You're to get just totally have nothing to do with those Gentiles. But if you don't want me. I'll call them out in the church days and they will believe on the Messiah. They will be saved and they will show you how it's done. There are missionaries today, and I support some, that go out and witness the gospel to Jewish people. The children of God in the Old Testament. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes. And they need a Gentile to tell them how to get saved today. Foolish nation. What do the Gentiles have? Paul said, dumb idols. They can't speak. You worship the unknown God. We did all kinds of things of our heritage of Gentiles. We killed our babies. We burned our babies. We worship trees and rocks. We worship fallen gods. We worship Satan. We ate things that we weren't supposed to eat. We've done all kinds of things. And from us, a foolish nation without God, God says, I will offer my son, Jesus Christ. And to the nation that is God, I'm going to bring those foolish people to you with the lively, blessed hope. The gospel has spread to the Gentiles to provoke the Jews. 
The book of Acts, the Jews were angry at the apostles, disciples, and Christians for preaching Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4, 17 to 20. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, vanity, there's that word again, vanity, vain, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness in their of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned in Christ. That's Gentiles. Look how good we are. Look at what God says about you in the New Testament by Paul. And there are some of these people in Ephesians 4, 17, they're in your church right now. They're not saved. Not everybody in the church is saved. These people are in the church today. Congregation. They're not in the church of the body of Jesus Christ. And these people, People that are vile and wicked in their ways. The foolish nation, God says, I will call and you will be saved. And I will send you to Jews. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13. Wherefore, remember, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, it's not good. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit abhors the flesh. Who are called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcision in, in the flesh, Jews, made by hands. That was a covenant that God gave Abraham to everybody of Abraham's family and household. All the males at eight days old were to be circumcised. That wasn't a Gentile thing. I know it's practiced today amongst Gentiles. It's a clean, it's a healthy attribute for male children, never female. But God put that circumcision that, hey, you are, you do what? What do you do for your God? Wow. That's kind of odd. You don't eat this? Well, we love this. Imagine Peter going to Cornelius' house and all the food that Cornelius had after Peter seen that vision of all the animals and the sheep and the food that he couldn't eat under the law, but now he's not under the law. The new smells that came into his nose, the new taste that came into his tongue. Do you know what the Gentiles had to teach Peter in Acts chapter 10? We're no longer under the law. God has welcomed us into the family. Made with hands, that at the time at that time, ye are without Christ, Gentile, being aliens from the common worth of Israel. You know, our president talks about these illegal aliens. He wants to build a wall. Okay, that's fine. I don't know, but if he doesn't know Jesus Christ as his savior, he's an alien outside the walls of New Jerusalem, and he'll never enter them without the faith and belief and trust of his heart by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Imagine, I don't know. I have no idea the guy's saved. I've never heard the testimony of him and believing on Jesus Christ to be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. You can't shut me up about Jesus Christ. I have not ever heard a statement on a camera, in a newspaper, on his tweet, that he has believed Jesus Christ as his Savior. And I sent him a letter with a gospel track and never got anything back. From the president. Now, if he has not, I don't know. If he has not ever received Christ as his savior, he's an alien. And he won't be accepted. We were those aliens at that time. Now God is called. The foolish nation. What is the foolish nation that we spoke about in Deuteronomy 32 21? They had no God. You know I'm no longer a fool? You know I'm no longer part of that nation? I'm not a Jewish. And I'm not a Gentile. No longer. I'm a Christian. 
I am of the family of God. I am a child of God through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. I am no longer foolish by receiving Christ in the gospel that Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scripture. I have believed on that with my heart. I'm no longer foolish. Anybody who has put their faith and trust in Christ are no longer foolish. You're neither Gentile, you're neither uh, Jew. You're a Jewish man, Dave. If you have of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes, you have put no faith in Jesus Christ. You are a Gentile. If you are of those dogs that are not Jewish and never put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're foolish. We've just seen two chapters in Deuteronomy. The, the children of Israel are ca being called foolish for their sins and their wickedness. On one account that I am not a fool is by my faith and belief. And the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. That At that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the common worth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God, big G, in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, were made nigh by the blood of Christ. So by what Christ has done for me, I'm saved. Glory to God. I am no more that fool of a Gentile nation without God. Galatians 4, 8, 9. How be it then, when ye knew not God, as a Catholic, I knew not God. I knew imagery, I knew statues, I knew prayers that you read, I knew confession, I knew this, this bread, I never had part of the wine, I knew this, this ritual of the Latin thing and, and the and incense and, and the priests and the nuns, and I knew that. But I was foolish without God still going to church every Saturday night. And if I would have died at that point, I would be foolish in hell. Service unto them which by nature are no gods. That's the Gentiles. No gods. But now, now I'm saved. After that, you have known God. I've known God through Jesus Christ. Or rather, are known of God. Oh, wait a minute. Not only do I know God, but my me is known of God. My name is in his last book of life. The Bible says he'll never forsake me. He'll never leave me. These things have I written that you, that you may know you have eternal life. How turn ye again to the weak and beggary elements? Where until you desire again to be in bondage? Now, they're going back to the law. Going back to that which is not today. That's foolish. When God says Jesus Christ has fulfilled the whole law and now is in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews, and then you foolishly go back to that which is old, which is no more, not going to work. Romans 11, 7 through 12. Without God, you are a fool. Without the salvation of Jesus Christ, you are a fool. A nation, a group of people, who do not put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ are fools. You may have Christians in the group, but the majority of the people, you know, the majority of people in Babylon, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were standing there not worshiping that idol, all those that knelt down and bowed down, they're foolish. And they suffered. And yet God protected them. Romans 11, 7 through 12. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he is seeketh for. The election has obtained it. And the rest were blinded. According as is written of God. Has given them the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see. And ears that they should not hear. That's foolish. We had one time a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I was preaching on the streets of the gospel, and, and this elderly woman goes over, you know, you look like a fool. Last week, I had a, a, a teenage boy, maybe younger, 10, 9, something like that, and he goes, he had his water bottles. It looks foolish. It is foolish. 
Unto this day, David says, let their table be a snare, a trap, a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened because they have not believed that that's the Messiah, Jesus Christ. They're still looking today for the Messiah, and he's already come. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the, the works, and in the being of God himself. And they rejected him. That they may not see him bowed and bow their back always. I say then, had they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. That foolish nation. We're not so much fools no more. I'm smarter than a, a, a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes. That I have received Jesus Christ. I have received their Messiah. I have believed on their God, which is now my God. And he's known by me and I am known by him. If a child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes, if they were to die today without God, without Jesus Christ, he would go off into eternal hell forever. And this dead, dumb, stupid Gentile who has put his faith upon Jesus Christ in the finished work of God, I'm going to New Jerusalem. But they can be saved. They got to hear from a Gentile. Very few Jews are out there. I don't mean few as five percent. I mean, there's a lot. But there are more Gentiles. There are more nation Gentiles than there's a little tiny nation of Israel. I say, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. When we preach Jesus, they get angry. When we preach the gospel, they're upset. When I preach to Jehovah of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the Lord God of Jacob, I say that Jesus Christ is that God. They get mad. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. How much more the fullness? I mean, what they gave up is to my richness. What they lost, my gain. And yet, this foolish nation Gentile that I am, now washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, I support and deal with people who work with Jews. A Jew would not want to come into my house, ask Peter. A Jew would not want to come to my city, ask Jonah. They got mad when Jesus gave two illustrations of uh, Naaman and of the widow woman that helped Elijah. Man, they dragged him out of the temple and brought him down. I mean, dragged him out of the synagogue and dragged him down. They were going to kill him. Just mentioned his dead dog. He's at the woman at the well. She's like, she's a half-breed. What are you Jews doing talking to me? We don't have anything to do with you. You have nothing to do with us. Oh, but when it's about Jesus. Romans 9, 25 to 33. As he saith to Hosea, that's Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. The foolish people who will receive Christ are no longer foolish. Uh, I lost my place here. Which were not my people. And her beloved. Which was not beloved. I am beloved of God. Because of Jesus Christ. A Jewish person that is of God. Who has been elected by God. Rejects Jesus Christ. Becomes hatred. Becomes the wrath of God. That's foolish. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said of them, ye are not my people, here I am, there shall they be called the children of the living God, there I am. 
Isaiah, or Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea. And that's a lot. No one's ever counted the sand of the sea. A raiment shall be saved. A little bit. A small amount. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we'd be as Sodom and be made like Gomorrah. They're gone. They're dead. How many people came out of Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot, his wife, and two daughters. Well, remove the wife because she didn't make it all the way out. The two daughters only followed because of their father, so really one. Out of the whole population of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities, let's say three of them made it to the cave in safety. That's not a majority. That's a minority. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, has attained to righteousness, even a righteousness which is a faith in Jesus. Many Jews have not put their faith in Jesus. Some have. As much as many Gentiles have not believed on Jesus. Some have. Many that go the broad way which leads to destruction. But few go through the straight gate that leadeth to life. But Israel, which follows after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Because they won't believe on Jesus. They rather have other gods. And that's foolish. Wherefore, because they saw it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone, that's Jesus. As is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, Jesus. And whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. 1 Corinthians 12, 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these, and there's that dumb idols, as ye were led. Now, dumb idols, they can't speak. My idol today can speak. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Bibles will record in red, light, red lettering what the words of Jesus Christ are. You cannot record any colored letters from a statue because they can't speak. And yet my God is holy, my God is righteous, my God spoke in the Old Testament, spoke to Moses, Abraham, Elijah. He also spoke to the 12 disciples, because I am one of them that believe that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. That's not foolish. You out there, you don't believe Jesus is God, you're foolish. You're making God jealous by believing a non-God. Your religion. But if you're to put your faith and trust in God. Who he is. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are now known of God. And you know God. And when Israel in Deuteronomy 32. When we look at that. Israel has sinned. By going after another God that's not their God. They have turned away and made God jealous. That's very foolish. Today, people, Gentiles and Jews, need to realize in their vanities of what is called religion. Religion is man-made. But Jesus Christ is God-approved. If it's not Jesus Christ, God is jealous and you're a fool. If your nation does not adhere to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the King James Bible. you got a foolish nation. And as far as that foolish nation, there is hope. According to what we read in the New Testament, God said, I called those Gentiles out. They believed on me. They believed the testimony of my son, and they're saved. Now some of the Jews have become fools. Don't be a fool. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And get out there and witness to the Jews. Tell them. 
because they don't believe. Many of them do not believe. Many of them reject. But the Bible says still, go in all the world and preach the gospel. 